Hello and welcome to BharatShakti.in. I am Brigadier Chatterjee. We are going to be talking about indigenization and innovation in the Indian Navy. As far as the Navy is concerned, it's certainly been the lead player amongst the three services when it comes to indigenization. To take us through the story of Navy having led the services in the indigenization, I have with me Commodore Gulaya. Welcome Commodore Gulaya. Uh, just to introduce the Commodore, uh, well, he is the officer in charge of the technic uh, Technology Development Acceleration Cell, which is a part of the Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organization. He has commanded three ships, uh, one of them being a Coast Guard sh ship. He has also had appointments both afloat and onshore. He has been in the NSCS for some time and he is also uh, been conferred the honorary designation of Chief Advisor Defense Innovation by the Rashtriya Raksha University. Welcome. Uh, Thank Commodore. you very much. It's a pleasure being here, sir. Uh, well, if you're all right, we can start with the first question. Sir, please. Right. Uh, my first question is, let me take you back a little bit. You know, the, the Navy's indigenization story, as I see it, really starts in 1960s, perhaps, when we decided that we'll make our own warships. Do you think it really starts there or perhaps starts even before that? And how much has it affected your culture in the Navy for indigenization? Uh, how have you strengthened that particular culture with this kind of a background? Uh, so, so you're very right. Uh, we started constructing uh, warships. The first uh, frigate sized ship which was made uh, was commissioned in the late 60s. But if we uh, go back a bit in history, even if we start from the independence time, in 1948, the plans paper which was written by then, uh, Commander Chatterjee, who later uh, rose to the CNS, uh, and he was the first uh, uh, CNS in the rank of Admiral. Uh, so the uh, plans paper which was authored by him at the time of independence when we had only minor war vessels and a few sloops, uh, spoke even in those days about three aircraft carriers, submarines, uh, multiple naval bases and the like. Uh, so the story starts from there and yes, after that we moved into uh, warship construction. We moved from being a buyer's navy to a builder's navy. And at a time uh, when there were no courses in naval architecture in India, we contacted the universities and the courses were started. And uh, the infrastructure was actually helped by the Navy to build the infrastructure for shipbuilding, defense shipbuilding specifically. And since then, we've come a long time, uh, we've come a long way. Uh, we uh, have uh, designed and constructed uh, more than 100 ships of various uh, types, uh, starting from the small yard craft and uh, minor war vessels, right up to the aircraft carrier, which we shall be commissioning shortly. Uh, so it's been a long journey. Uh, but if I can add about uh, not only indigenization, it is also about innovation. So uh, I'm sure everybody's heard about uh, Commodore Paul Raj. Uh, and in fact, if you haven't, I would suggest you Google it. And I can mention this if you're Googling it on your mobile phone, you probably need to thank him for it. So he was a naval officer who uh, um, came up with this idea of MIMO or multiple in, multiple out, uh, which revolutionized the uh, entire wireless communication and the mobile uh, telephony. Uh, that was, of course, when he was uh, in Stanford, and he's uh, presently the Professor Emeritus in Stanford. But uh, while he was in the Navy, uh, he did substantial work uh, when it comes to uh, innovating. Uh, not many people would be aware, but our first sonar was made by him in the early 70s, uh, led uh, by him. He was a major participant in that. And as he says, that we never had to import a sonar after that. Uh, Three national level institutes, uh, the Central Research Laboratory, the CDAC, and the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics were actually set up under his mentorship or his, uh, he was the founding director of these three institutes. So Navy's got a, a long and impressive track record, not only in uh, indigenization, but also in innovation. As you mentioned in the beginning that uh, we are at the forefront. So I think we can see further because we stand on the shoulder of giants. Okay, I think that's a very interesting story regarding uh, Paul that you talked about. And I'm sure all of us must be thankful to him. Uh, let's go a little further. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, you see, now we're making complex uh, uh, platforms for the Navy. We're making uh, aircraft carriers, we're making submarines, etc. And now we've also got the NIIO uh, having been made. So what is the, uh, how has that accelerated uh, NIIO or coming in between, uh, let's see, your process of indigenization or innovations being tracked? Uh, so, sir, if you see, uh, the, the Navy has had a fully functional and a very, very dynamic uh, directorate of indigenization uh, for many years now. 
uh, the progress which we made is uh, so in the navy we normally talk about uh, the to float to move and to fight component so to a uh, float we've achieved more than 90 percent indigenization in uh, to move more than 60 percent the fight component uh, is just about 50 percent as of now so we realize that it has not seen uh, the same kind of progress uh, the naval innovation and indigenization organization uh, it is aimed at accelerating uh, technology induction uh, in uh, in today's age of fast changing technology it was felt that there is a requirement to compress timelines and accelerate technology induction so niio brings together the twin aspects of innovation and indigenization and uh, that is and has been our focus area and this has now been institutionalized in accordance with the dap20 uh, which uh, uh, spoke about uh, which envisage service headquarters having uh, iios nested within the service headquarters uh, you can talk a little bit about your own organization also about you're the voice of the TDAC. So, yeah, sir. So, I, I, I am uh, officer in charge of the technology development acceleration cell. So, the NIIO is actually a three tiered mechanism. Uh, at the apex level, we have the Naval Technology Acceleration Council, which is uh, chaired by the vice chief of the naval staff. And it has ex officio as well as nominated members, uh, which includes uh, people from the academia, industry, of course, the naval officers are there, uh, including naval officers, regardless of rank, who are nominated members based on their. Uh, demonstrated ability for out-of-the-box thinking. Uh, so this is the apex body which gives uh, guidance on both innovation and indigenization and it meets every six months. Uh, under that we have the NIIO working group uh, which is co-chaired by uh, the assistant chief of naval staff staff requirements and the assistant chief of material modernization. Uh, so th this meets uh, every two months or more often if required. And uh, under that you have the implementing uh, implementation agencies uh, which is uh, the technology development acceleration cell, which as you mentioned, I, is what I head, which looks after innovation and the directorate of indigenization, which has been there for quite some time. And they continue to do a wonderful job. Uh, we have indigenized, big and small, we've indigenized uh, over 7,000 items uh, of uh, various kinds already. So I think that is uh, a very impressive track record as far as indigenization is concerned. Well, definitely 7,000 is, is 7, certain. 000, yes, sir. It's certainly very impressive. Uh, if we can, uh, you see, there are certain agencies that you have to interact with more uh, in order to progress indigenization, progress innovation. Uh, and I would say these uh, organizations include the academia, they include the industry, they also include maybe some R&D establishments, let us say. So how do you really go about interacting with them and what kind of inputs do you share with them? Uh, so, uh, so, so when it comes to innovation and indigenization, all three, the academia, the industry, uh, the users, all three have to come together. So we have, uh, uh, since the very short time since uh, the NIA was set up, uh, we, so I, I'll, I'll come to them one by one. So, so if we start with the academia, uh, we have MOUs to work jointly on innovation with a number of uh, universities. I think totally we have about 20 MOUs as of now. Uh, uh, when it comes uh, for the academia, we have uh, MOU with IIT Mumbai, IIT Delhi, the Rashtriya Raksha University, the National Forensic Sciences University, to name just a few, and uh, I'm naming these just because they're the institutes of national importance. And uh, we have also filed uh, joint patents with them uh, in many cases. Uh, in fact, you'll be happy to know that uh, since NIA was launched, uh, about uh, more than 35 IPR applications have been filed by naval personnel. Uh, some are in conjunction with universities, some are uh, in-house. Uh, we have also started something known as INSTEP, or Indian Naval Students Technical Engagement Program. So we have uh, 15 uh, colleges and universities as of today as instant knowledge partners. And uh, the aim here is to ignite the young minds who are the future of the country to start thinking about innovation. So uh, we provide them a five month uh, online internship where they're expected to come up with a problem statement. Uh, we examine the problem statement, we help them refine it and uh, we handhold them and guide them through the process. Uh, so that is something which has shown uh, good results. Uh, as far as the industry is concerned, uh, we've started uh, uh, three, four initiatives. Uh, one is uh, on the last Friday of every month, uh, we have uh, with SIDM, uh, we have interaction with the industry uh, uh, as per a long-term calendar. So every month we choose a different theme. Uh, we uh, interact with them, uh, we uh, handhold them, we take up questions, because especially when it comes to the small firms and MSMEs, they normally do not know whom to contact. So this happens over the CII Hive platform. Uh, the uh, industry has been given one single point of contact and it's thereafter that officer's task to get in touch with the concerned directorate and uh, facilitate the thing. The industry can ask for uh, a virtual uh, meeting 
uh, which again we facilitate. Uh, we have started this process of designating uh, some deep tech firms as innovation industry partners. Uh, so under that what happens is uh, while the procurement will follow the laid down uh, norms, uh, we help them refine their product by giving them access uh, to uh, ships, uh, submarines or uh, as the case may be uh, and guide them so they can better understand the naval problem statement. So six are there as of now and I'm sure more will be added uh, in the future. Uh, it, it's all about uh, collaborative uh, this thing. As I mentioned earlier, it's the users, the R&D labs, uh, DRDO, DPSUs, industry, everybody has to come together. So it, it's, it's about a collaborative uh, approach so as to create an ecosystem of innovation. Uh, that is what I aim is. All right. Uh, uh, one big challenge that you people have taken up uh, now in this 75th year of uh, anniversary of uh, independence is to have 75 uh, new technology uh, pro or develop 75 new technology or uh, products for that matter. Now, if you could tell us about this, I think you're calling it Sprint. Uh, so what's it all about and how are you going about it, methodology of the whole system? Sir. Uh, so, so Sprint obviously is uh, uh, it, it more than an acronym, it's a backronym. First we thought of the name Sprint and then we found the words to uh, uh, fit into it. Uh, but Sprint was chosen because it uh, reflects the need to accelerate. Uh, as I mentioned, the Naval Technology Acceleration Council or NTAC or even the, the TDAC, which is the Technology Development Acceleration Cell, both have the word acceleration in it. It was uh, chosen with a purpose. So Sprint symbolizes the speed with which we uh, need to sprint towards an Atmanitbar Bharat. Our uh, sprint stands for supporting pole vaulting in R&D through uh, IDEX, NIIO and TDAC. So which again is a collaborative project uh, between us and the Defence Innovation Organisation uh, which uh, conducts IDEX as you would be aware. Uh, we've signed an MOU with them to work jointly uh, on this and as a part of Azadi Kamrit Mahatsav, we uh, plan to induct at least uh, 75 uh, products or technologies into the Indian Navy uh, in the coming year. Uh, so it, uh, these are tight timelines, yes, but uh, we feel that it is achievable. Uh, I will not really be able to say where the idea of Sprint originated. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, there were some posts which were put on the CNS discussion forum, which is there for uh, any officer or any sailor in the Navy who has an idea. He can put it up on the discussion forum over the Naval uh, Internal Network. So some posts were put on that. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, Dr. Mashirka's book which spoke that uh, instead of leapfrogging, uh, we need to move to pole vaulting. So the word pole vaulting came from there. And we thought it was an apt thing uh, if we want to uh, accelerate. Uh, so we came up with this backronym and the final decision uh, was taken in the meeting of the PSOs or the principal staff officers where uh, this was deliberated over length and uh, we felt that if you want different results, uh, you need to do things differently. So that's how uh, this proposal was made. Uh, it was then discussed with the Ministry of Defence and uh, they were also quite enthused and uh, thereafter we decided that uh, it would be a joint project uh, between the DIO and the NIA. You see, the one apprehension that could be there is the fact that uh, you've got very tight timelines sure. for 75 projects to be completed, uh, whatever may be, uh, technology or products. Uh, do you expect anything really game changer of a uh, product or technology in this tight timelines? I uh, wouldn't like to go into the details at the current stage, sir, because uh, uh, the problems uh, would be unveiled on the 18th during the NIO uh, seminar, which is there. But uh, yes, I do believe that some of these technologies would actually be, as you uh, call them, game changers. Uh, they would be game changers. A few of them would be global firsts. And we are um, very confident that the Indian industry would rise up to the challenges and uh, come up with products uh, which meet our requirements. Uh, they Not all of them would be a big ticket game changer items, but all of them would solve a felt need of the users. And uh, some big ticket items will certainly be there. I can assure you that. Okay, uh, let's talk about the other partner that you have in order to achieve your 75 goal, and that is the industry. Is the industry really ready for this kind of a thing? The Indian industry? Uh, Yes, sir. I firmly, I firmly believe that they are. Uh, and um, if, if I can just say here, uh, you know, as the world is shifting uh, towards the unmanned systems, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, algorithmic warfare and what have you, uh, manned, unmanned teaming. Uh, so that's somewhere where I think the Indian industry, especially the startups, uh, do have a solid advantage uh, in the sense that this is something where uh, you do not require a large manufacturing base uh, or this thing, somebody uh, can innovate uh, even with a small setup and uh, 
we, we have been quite amazed with the kind of work which has been done, especially in these niche fields, uh, deep tech firms who are doing uh, uh, amazing amount of work. And we are fairly confident that uh, the way uh, we've been interacting with the uh, industry and the academy, and we are very confident that they will rise up to the challenge and they will deliver. Uh, right. One last question, and that's about, you've got a uh, seminar scheduled very shortly. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that seminar, what all is going to be there in it? Uh, so the seminar is, uh, we, we are calling it Swabalamban. Uh, it is scheduled uh, in New Delhi, uh, though it will be uh, in a hybrid mode, but uh, it's scheduled at New Delhi at the Ambedkar International Center on the 18th and 19th of July. Uh, on the 18th, uh, we will be having uh, uh, sessions which are dedicated to uh, innovation, indigenization, aviation and armament. And uh, in addition to uh, uh, naval officers in the industry and everybody will be there, uh, uh, once again, we, uh, as I said, it, our aim is not to induct uh, you know, 5, 10, 15 or even 75 technologies. That, of course, will happen. But the aim is also to create an ecosystem of innovation. Uh, so we specifically invited and we look forward to having uh, uh, students from schools and universities also there. Uh, because that is important. Uh, we will uh, be having this on the uh, first day. Uh, as a part of that, uh, there would be uh, book releases, there would be signing of MOUs, and also uh, the unveiling of the problem statements, the 75, uh, more than 75 uh, problem statements, which shall be unveiled that day. It would happen on day one. Uh, day two has been kept specifically for outreach to the IOR. So this would be in um, uh, consonance with the government's vision articulated vision of Sagar or security and growth for all in the region, which is a very inclusive concept. Uh, so uh, we wanted to showcase uh, the Indian, uh, the domestic industry which we have, the capability, the kind of work which they're doing. So this would be in a hybrid mode where the defense attaches of our friendly foreign countries of the Indian Ocean region would be invited uh, to uh, see the exhibition uh, as well as uh, the industry would uh, be show showcasing the capabilities uh, to them uh, live in Delhi. And uh, we have requested our defense attaches uh, in the countries where they're posted uh, to coordinate with uh, people in that country so that they can see it in the hybrid mode over the internet. And uh, as I said, it's called outreach to the IOR. So we want to uh, want it to be inclusive and in line with the vision of Sagar. Well, thank you, Commodo. Thanks so much for a very nice talk on indigenization, the Navy's priority. And I'm sure with this 75 uh, projects that you're taking up, the kind of sprint that you're going to uh, go in for is really going to keep you busy and all the luck for what you need to be really successful in this 75 projects because I'm sure it's going to benefit the Navy, of course, and certainly the whole country. Uh, thank you so much, Kamal. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, viewers. And do log on to our YouTube channel and our social media. Go to visit our social media pages. Uh, thank you so much.